Well, welcome everybody to the first virtual assembly of the year, possibly the first virtual assembly ever. And today we have a great audience. We've got Sam, and we've got Abby, and we've got Ray. Oh, we've got three people in our audience today. We have got a few more at school, but look, thanks for tuning in this morning. Uh, we've got a few things coming up. We've got some interviews. We've got some joke telling. Uh, we've got some information about COVID and a little Bible study just at the end. So we hope you enjoy this morning. All right, so first up, we have Mr. Spence, who's going to give us a brief COVID update. Over to you, Mr. Spence. Hello to everyone. This seems like an unusual way to hold an assembly, but as you're aware, all of New South Wales is currently under stay-at-home orders. God willing, we may be able to return and be together in person next week. You know, God has made each and every one of us differently. For some people, they love staying at home and having their own space. Other people love being in big groups and get lots of energy from having large people, lots of people around them. Staying at home seems really hard for some people and really easy for others. Whether you like staying at home or whether you would rather be able to come to school, it's important to care for one another. If you have brothers and sisters at home, care for your parents by not fighting. Care for your parents by cleaning up the mess you make. When everyone's at home, there's a lot more mess and this is hard on your parents. So wash up your dishes, clean up your toys, clean your room. You know, you could challenge yourself to think about how you could do something nice for everyone in your family today. If you're old enough and allowed, could you cook a cake for morning tea? Could you pick some flowers for mum? Could you make a card and tell someone in your family how much they mean for you? Just because we aren't allowed to leave the house doesn't mean you can't care for your friends. Can you organise a Google or a Zoom meet and catch up by a video call after school? Could you send them an email checking on how they're going? Even though we aren't allowed to be together, it could be a time where you really build relationships. Who can you do something nice for? Hopefully we can see each other in person soon. Until then, let's creatively care for one another. All right, next up, we have an interview. And it's an interview with someone in our junior school who was born overseas. Now, I wonder who could that be? We're going to go over to Mrs Larkin, who's going to interview uh, that staff member now. Over to you, Mrs Larkin. Well, good morning, everybody. We're going to continue our series of who's who in the school that we do in middle school assembly. But today it's for the whole school. Um, we're thrilled in Tamworth to have so many good teachers. And today we thought we'd get to know Mr. Misikos, who is one of our wonderful kindergarten teachers. Uh, good morning, Mr. Good Misikos. Good morning, thank you for your kind words. <laughs> um, Mr. Misikos, what was it like growing up as a child in Greece? Well, it was, in a sense, quite similar with Australia. We used to play soccer all the time with the boys. And it was a time in Greece back then where everyone's li everyone liked hip-hop music and rap. So that's, that's what we did in Greece. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, your family, when you were growing up, were they followers of Jesus? They were. So they grew up as uh, Orthodox Christians, which is a bit different. And it was all about tradition in Greece. But then when they were about in the 20s, they converted to Christianity in the sense we understand it here at Carinia. And I grew up in the church, essentially. But, you know, I thought it was very boring. So I was in the church and I thought I was just looking at my words and I was waiting for it to finish, didn't pay attention. And I thought it wasn't relevant to me. I thought, you know, you like Jesus, that's good for you. It's not for me. And all of this actually changed one day when we visited another church and then I heard the gospel and then it just got up in my heart and I realized that Jesus died for my sins and that changed my whole life from then on. It was about when I was 15, 16 years old. Yeah. So how old were you when your family moved to Australia? So I was in my 20s and uh, it just happened very randomly. I was at the university at the time st uh, studying the um, Bachelor of Music in Athens and at the same time, I was trying to do a, uh, a certificate in theology. And I studied that for a year. And then I had no idea what was going to happen. 
But through miraculous ways, God opened the door to Australia, to come to Australia. And uh, it was a step of faith in the sense that I just had my suitcase, my guitar, and $200. Wow. That was it. Got on the plane seven years ago, 20 years old. And I thought, God, let's see how it goes. And uh, I'm saying all this for the glory of God, how um, God opened the doors and changed everything. Yeah. Yeah. What an amazing story. Yeah. Amazing. When you were a young boy, what job did you want to do? My parents still make fun of me because, because I was so involved with um, hip hop and rap music. <laughs> I just wanted to work down, down in Athens. They had a nice underground retail store with only hip hop clothes. So that's what I wanted to do, just sell clothes. <laughs> that was my dream. And, Great yeah, dream. Yeah, my relatives in Greece still make fun of me. He said, now you're a teacher. I just wanted to sell clothes. That's all we wanted to do. Said, yeah. No. Great Makes story. Sense. Yeah. yeah. So why teaching? Uh, when I was studying in Australia, I started doing a Bachelor of Arts before my Master's of Teaching. Um, I started working at the Greek community schools, afternoon schools in Sydney. Mm. So I was teaching Greek Australian kids how to speak Greek. And while I was doing that from kids from kindergarten to year six, I thought, I love that. I yeah. love what I'm doing, working with kids. And then I went back to uni and I said to them, what do I need to do to do primary teaching? What do I need to change? These units, these units, I just want to do primary teaching. And it has been great. Yeah. 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 Well, I we're, we're very excited and thrilled that you made that choice. Yeah. Um, the last question I have for you is that Tamworth is a long way from Athens yep. in Greece. So why Tamworth and why Carinia? Yeah, coming, coming from Greece and um, coming to Australia and then to Tamworth, can I just say it was, it was all Greek to me. Yeah, you uh, can say that. It was all Greek to me. And not in the sense that I knew what was happening. It was all new and all very different. But I was working at public schools in Sydney for a year and a half. And then I, in the meantime, I had visited Tamworth. So I, li I liked it as a country town, but I didn't know about Carinia. Um, a friend of mine told me about Carinia. And when I understood the idea of being at a Christian school with like-minded people and be able to talk to the kids about God as well, that made all the difference to me and uh, I've never been happier in my life and I think it's a truly a blessing to be here. Yes, and we are truly blessed by you being here. Thank you. So hopefully you've got to know Mr. Misikos a bit better this morning and I hope you enjoy the rest of the assembly. Have a great day. Next we have Mr. Davis and Mr. Davis is going to interview one of our Year 12 students. Uh, year 12 doing the HSC at the moment. A very unusual time to be doing the HSC and uh, Mr Davis is going to catch up with him right now. So over to you, Mr Davis. Oh, we're good. <laughs> well, what an absolute privilege. Uh, it's been how many days of lockdown now? I think seven school days of lockdown and Ryan is our very first Year 12 student to arrive at school. Um, and boy, we probably needed him. I mean, our first student leader to arrive on site. Uh, Ryan, you must be pretty busy because uh, normally it takes about 40 student leaders to do the jobs around here. We haven't had anyone for seven days. Your first day as a student leader, how have things been? Yeah, look, things have been, they've been all right, but a little bit rough. You know, year 11, they've been getting up to all sorts of mischief. Yeah. You've got to mm. constantly keep an eye on them. Yep. And, you know, as the only year 12 student leader here, it's especially hard. Mm -hmm. Uh, really keeping an eye on them, you know, they've been sticking random stuff to the water fountains and all this. Uh, that's been the main concern, but, you know, looking at some of the other years, you know, going to head down to kindergarten later, oh, thanks, see how Ron. they're going yeah. with their Cheers. reading. Yep. Um, but yeah, so it's been a bit of a mixed bag, but it's been good. Uh, I mean, we just really appreciate you uh, taking this emergency call and coming in for us today. Um, so thank you very much for that. It's my pleasure. Uh, now, you're not doing, well, you sort of are doing online learning today, but you've been at home every other day on this. How's your online learning been, Ryan? Uh, so my online learning has personally been pretty good. Uh, it's been pretty comfortable and seamless. Uh, the teachers have been working really hard, so it's uh, you know, been quite comfortable well, and that's good. not a hassle. Teachers, that's a relief for you. Um, things could have got a bit ugly there, so that's great. Thanks, Ryan. Um, mate, we're coming towards that time where uh, we'll have a final assembly, hopefully, COVID willing and God willing, obviously. Uh, and uh, the question is always asked, what are you going to do when you leave school? 
So my plan for when I leave school is to go to ADFA. That's, so that's the Australian Defence Force Academy. So yeah. I'll, my plan is to join the army and get a degree as a mechanical engineer with them. And so then I'll get to work on, you know, tanks and yeah. that kind of stuff. It should be pretty exciting. So today's been sort of an experience of that, having to deal with year 11. <laughs> uh, so glad that we were oh, able yeah. to provide yeah. that opportunity for you. Um, there's heaps of tough things in lockdown, heaps of tough things for lots of people. Um, what are you thankful for during this time? I'm thankful for my family. I've got to spend a lot more time with them. Uh, I've had a lot more leisure time as well. I don't have to spend so much time traveling to and from school because yes. I live a fair way away. Yep. Uh, and yeah, I'm thankful that the whole uh, process has been real seamless and smooth as well. Yeah, that's good. Um, some people are doing it tough. And I know uh, having spoken to some parents and students that they uh, are not finding it easy at all. What advice would you give to a student that's not finding it easy and uh, is doing it tough? I think, uh, first of all, uh, keep trusting in God, rely on him. He, he, he knows what he's doing. Uh, but also, I suppose, some more practical advice in a sense would be, you know, don't, don't think too far ahead. Make, make a list of what you're going to do and go uh, from one moment to the next, thinking uh, more on the present. Great. That's good advice. I might actually take that on board for my next lesson. That's great. Um, so uh, year 12, big end to the year. Uh, it's crazy times for you guys with the HSC looming. Uh, any prayer points, things we can pray for you guys in year 12? Uh, number one is stress. Uh, I know a lot of people are getting pretty stressed about HSC. So yes. uh, stress, I suppose also that we'll perform well. Yeah. Uh, and also that we won't lose sight of everything else. So uh, you know, it can be many things from family or God. Uh, I know some people who, you know, that's been kind of taking the back seat a bit and that's not so good. You always mm. want to make sure that's Absolutely. front and centre. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ryan. It's nice to have you here. It's nice uh, to be look, here. I assume that this will be your last day here, so uh, <laughs> we'll have to look after your 11 from now on. Thanks, mate. No problem. Well, thank you, Mr. Davis and Ryan. And now uh, the second last thing for this morning, uh, Mr. Weary is going to talk to you about three, three, three things, three things uh, to help you study at home. Over to you, Mr. Weary. Hi, everyone. I've been asked to come up with three ideas that will help you to learn and study from home. So here they are. Number one, if you're able, create a place where you can do your schoolwork. This is the place where you complete your lessons and meet with your teachers. It helps to separate work time and play time and says, this is where I come to work. Number two, take breaks, especially from screens. Make sure you go outside, get some fresh air, go for a run, cook something, talk to a friend. Taking breaks will help you get through the whole school day. And number three, ask your teacher for help. Be faithful in your learning, but if there is something that you don't understand, or if you're struggling with an idea or a concept, or if the instructions don't make sense, ask your teacher for help. Email them, raise your hand on the meet, but make sure you ask for help. Your teachers are really keen to help you with your learning in this unusual time. And above all, we can be thankful for the privilege of learning about God's world, even though many of us are learning from home. Now, just for a bit of comic relief, uh, I've asked our audience if they can come up and, and say a few things. Sam, come on up. So, Sam, tell us your joke. Did you hear about the fight on the stairs? I did not, Sam. They say it escalated real quickly. <laughs> Good one. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> All right. Now, Abby, come on up here, Abby. So, Abby, I heard that you had a great holiday last term. Yes, I did. All right. So, tell us, Abby, where did you go? We went to Ningaloo Reef and we got to swim with the whale sharks. You got to swim with a whale shark. Don't they eat you? No. No? Wow. What was it like? How big were they? Um, the biggest one we saw was eight metres. Eight metres. That is huge. Yes. So that was the highlight for your trip? Yes, it was. Wow. Well, it's great to have you back, Abby. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Rhea, I hear you've got a joke for us as well. What? Um, what do you call a fly with, without wings? What do you call a fly without wings? I don't know, Ree. What do you? A walk. <laughs> a walk. Good one, Ree. Thanks for sharing that joke. 
There's this great story about a lady called Florence Chadwick. What a great name that is. She was the first woman to ever swim the English Channel. That's the channel that exists between England and France. In her first attempt, it was foggy and she couldn't see well. And after swimming for 15 hours, she finally gave up. And when she got onto the rescue boat, she realized that she was only about half a mile from the shore. Florence said, I think I could have, I could have made it if I'd seen the shore. In her second attempt, Florence had a beautiful and perfect day. She could see the shoreline for most of the way of the swim and she was able to make it quite easily. Well, like Florence, as Christians, we often get lost and we fix our eyes on things that don't matter that much. We get caught up in things that aren't important and we start to worry about ourselves when we should worry about what Jesus thinks and looking after other people above ourselves. The Apostle Paul says in Colossians 3 verses 1 and 2, Since then you have been raised with Christ Jesus. Set your heart and mind on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Well, kids, even in hard times as Christians, we can look forward to a time when we see Jesus, through whom the whole world, the whole universe was made. And his majesty will be so great that we can enjoy him forever. So let me encourage you all to fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Read the Bible every day. Pray for those in need. And maybe give someone a call or send them a card to help them. Little things can sometimes make a big difference. Well, thank you today for tuning in to uh, this virtual assembly. Do hope you have a great day, and I'm just going to finish in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our great and all-powerful God. You have a plan for each of us, and we pray, Lord, that we can trust in you each day. Help us to fix our eyes on you as the author and perfecter of our faith. And we pray that we will be able to help and serve other people above ourselves during this hard and difficult time. And we pray all these things in your great name. Amen.